Welcome everybody to a brand new episode of Charge and Cruise. We are doing a special video today, our first ride and review of, you guessed it, the Juiced Rip Racer. Now, if you're new to this channel, this e-bike has been my absolute workhorse. It has gotten me through everything that I have thrown at it, from sand to trail to mud, uphill, downhill, night rides, whatever you throw at this thing it just powers it on through now when shopping for an e-bike i wanted the perfect balance of price power and comfortability because you're not going to be able to get all three especially with price as a factor so i definitely did a lot of shopping around and there are tons of e-bikes out there guys a lot of them around this price range a thousand to twelve hundred when i was doing the shopping i found out that about 80 to 90 percent of all these bikes are basically just cheap chinese imports what we call white labeled so they just buy them from the same factory they put their name on them boom boom done deal oh man there are a lot of surfers out today i count at least 30 of them yeah this is one of our most popular surfing spots no wonder why they're out here today the waves are looking perfect wow but we're gonna continue on this bike path. We're gonna talk about the Juice Rip Racer some more. But first things first, we're gonna get our speed test out of the way. Here we are at the good old testing ground. As you can see, this is actually a dead end. So we'll be able to use this entire road to try to get up to speed. Now the first test is going to be our 0 to 20, throttle only. I'll put the timer somewhere on the bottom and we'll be able to see how fast we can get to 20 miles an hour. Right now we are in racer mode and we are topped off at 58 volts. So we're going to go in 3, 2, 1, go. Eighteen twenty. There we go. That was pretty fast. Yeah, it gets to 20 very, very quickly. It certainly feels like five or six seconds. Very, very easy to get going on the Juiced Rip Racer. Now this is going to be our top speed run. Once again, we are in racer mode, still topped off here. And we're gonna go ahead and do throttle only. And let's see how fast we can get by the end of this road. Usually I get around 30 miles an hour. I am running 15 PSI on both tires, so not the hardest tires, and they're definitely not street tires. They are just the uh, stock knobbies. So let's go ahead and try it out. Throttle only. I'm gonna try to get the top speed here. All right, let's go. 18.20. All right, we are up to 20 already. I think we're gonna be able to catch up to this car. We'll see. 26, 27, 28, 29, 29 and a half. All right, we were only able to get to 29 at that point. So since we've determined that 29 and a half is the top speed of this bike on throttle only, we're gonna go ahead and try to help it out with a little bit of pedal assist. So let's see if we can't crack the 30 mark using a little bit of leg power. Let's go ahead and try it out. We're gonna try to push it with a little bit of pedal assist. We are already at 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 29 and a half, 30, 30.3. Oh, there's a car. That car ruined the speed run, but we were at 30.3. I think I had enough room to maybe get to 31. But yeah, just around 30 to 32 miles an hour is the top speed. When you have the off-road controller installed, if you get this bike stock, top speed is gonna be 28 miles an hour and that is with pedal assist. 
I have heard that the new 19.2 amp hour batteries from Juiced actually push more power than the stock battery. And I have heard of 33, 34 miles an hour, but either way, you can just call this a 30 mile an hour bike. Unless it's stock, then of course, stock ships as a legal class three e-bike, 28 miles an hour. However, I do love the get up and go of this bike. It doesn't really need to have the top speed because of situations like that, you know, cars backing up, there's stop lights, stop signs, regular commuter traffic. The sweet spot for me is 28 to 30 miles an hour around my town. Could be different from yours, of course. You might have long parkways, long avenues. For me, there's a lot of stop and go traffic, a lot of stop lights. No need to really go 40 miles an hour in any situation. So let's move along now and continue with our bike review. So the Juice Rip Racer comes with a 750 watt nominal rear hub motor. It peaks at about 1300 watts and it is paired with a 52 volt system, which means better torque and more power. Now the retail price for this bike fluctuates. I mean, it's listed as 1300, but I've seen it as low as 999. You can get it for as low as 899 with discount codes. Plus they offer free shipping, which is insane. So this thing shipped to you just about $1,000, which is very, very cheap considering it's pairing with a 52 volt system. Now the Juice Rip Racer ships to you as a completely legal class three e-bike ready to go on the streets. One of my favorite things about this bike has got to be the pedaling experience. So when shopping for an e-bike, you know, there's so many different types. There's your, you know, cafe style moped racers. You got your electric dirt bikes. You got your cargo style baby carriers. But a lot of them guys don't have the best pedaling experience. You'll see people's knees on their videos go way up here. If you're a cruiser, it's not meant for pedaling. So I really wanted the pedaling experience mainly because I enjoy biking using the power of my legs. So I definitely wanted a bike frame style e-bike and this is it right here. With its BMX style framing, I think it's just a perfect balance of power and well, pedability. Is that a word? But look at this, because it's so agile and the wheelbase is pretty short, you can really just get around and push this thing wherever you want. You're not really lugging it around. You can kind of just maneuver it around obstacles. You know, wherever you want to put this thing, it's really easy. So if I wanted to really turn around, I can just grab it and boom, quick little U-turn. And it's really not that heavy. I think it's around 60 to 70 pounds, something like that. And most of it is the battery, to be honest, because without the battery, this thing is pretty light. So here's a good look at it. As you can see, it's a nice BMX style frame. I forget what this actual blue color is called, but maybe Baja blue, something like that. It's just a gorgeous bike. I love the frame. I love the design and the battery integration is just perfect. When you look at this thing, it is a bike. And you know, one of the plus sides of having a bike style e-bike is you don't get any dirty looks. Like this thing's not trying to look like a dirt bike. When I'm on the sidewalk or a pedestrian trail, I get waves, you know, because it looks like I'm on a bike and I'm pedaling like I'm on a bike. But little do they know, there's a 52 volt system in here and it can punch up to 30 at a flick of the wrist. Uh, kind of a sleeper, I guess, in car terms. For an entry level e-bike with the price and the power and the frame design, I just don't think that there is competition. But everything is not all roses. Of course, I gotta be a little critical of some aspects of the bike. And the main one being the brakes. It's the brake pads they use, man. The brake pads they use on the stock Rip Racer quite frankly suck. Not like they can't stop, but they are just so squeaky. Right off the bat, they are squealing like banshees. Here's a little test run here on the stop sign. Oh yeah, squealing. Squealing like crazy. But good thing is, brake pads are very cheap. You can get them for like 10, 15 bucks or you could replace them and they will be good to go. Just a little bit of an annoyance there, but one we can definitely live with. Other than the brakes, I can't really find any other fault with the Chew Strip Racer. I mean, comfort-wise, I already knew what I was getting myself into. I knew it was a hardtail. I'm not gonna get any suspension. And riding BMX pretty much all my childhood, I'm super used to just lifting up off the bike and absorbing 
whatever comes my way and using my body as full suspension. Everything was put together really nicely and the packaging when they ship it out to you is just perfect. I mean, there's foam everywhere. Everything fits perfectly into that box. I highly doubt you would get any damage from the way they ship these bikes. Oh yeah, it is super nice out here. And in one of my old videos, I actually rode like, I would probably think 10 to 15 miles on straight sand. What was it? It was my four star beach resort experience video where I just biked pretty much the length of the coastline all on the sand with the Rip Racer and it handled it like a champ. So yeah, if you're a big sand rider, if you like going around to the beach, this thing just powers through it like no problem. Of course, slow it down. You're not gonna be hitting 28 miles an hour on the sand. You're most likely gonna catch a loose patch and dump it. But for the most part, I was able to gracefully cruise down the coastline for like 10, 15 miles. It was an awesome experience. Make sure to check out that video. Yeah, the Rip Racer is perfect for just cruising around town like this. This is what it's really meant to do. I mean, if you're on the pavement, this thing just glides. Of course, you're gonna feel the bumps, but with a cheap suspension seat and lowering the tire pressures a little bit, it's a pretty smooth ride. And once again, guys, this is an entry-level e-bike. I'm not competing with no $2,000 bikes, $1,800 bikes that go 40, 45 miles an hour. This is a street legal e-bike that you can purchase and get started and enjoy the e-bike hobby. And you know what? With the 52 volt system, this thing keeps up to, I would say 80 to 90% of the bikes out there that you find on the streets. All your electrics, your rad powers. I mean, this thing is faster than all of those. Now with knobby fat tires, naturally you're gonna wanna do some light trail riding and the Rip Racer does that pretty well. Let's go ahead and go down here and do a little bit of a light trail riding. So of course you're not gonna go up no black diamond mountain bike jumps, trails like that. But you know, trails like this where, you know, kind of just follows a, a river or maybe a hiking trail. It goes through it pretty nicely. I mean, this, no suspension does suck, but you can always just lift your body and just glide along as if you're riding a BMX because you are riding a BMX. It's not gonna be the most comfortable, but you have the power to pretty much push through all of it. Even uphill, I pushed through pretty gnarly uphills on dirt paths before because of the 52 volt system. It just knocks it out of the park. Combination of low PSI and fat knobby tires. You can definitely do trails like this with no problem. I mean, what else is there more to say, guys? You got the speed, you got the power, you've got the pedaling experience, you've got the agility, all for a really, really great price. And paired with a 52 volt system, which I can't say that enough, makes a huge difference. You can look at all the Rip Racer reviews online and you can see this thing just tackles uphills like crazy. It really does matter that 52 volts. So if you wanna enjoy moments like these where you're biking around, you're exploring, you know, you're checking out neighborhoods you've never seen before. An e-bike is the perfect outlet to do that. And if you're on a budget, I can't say that there's a better bang for buck value than the Juiced Rip Racer. So if you do decide to get one of these, make sure you let them know that Charge and Cruise convince you to do so. Lead them to my uh, YouTube channel. That would help me out a ton. So in closing remarks, guys, this bike is probably a little over two years old now but it is still the best bang for buck value on the market, in my opinion. Now, there are several other videos from other YouTubers that go into a more thorough review. They go more in depth with the pedal assist levels and the hill climb tests. I'll link a few down below of my favorite reviews that I looked up before purchasing this bike. You really can't trust a reviewer that hasn't put in the mileage. So as you can see here, or maybe not see, I don't know, but we have done over 1300 miles on this guy. So you know, when I'm speaking about it, you know, my butt's been on that seat for over 1300 miles. I'm gonna let you know exactly how I feel about it. And so far, this bike for its cost has just exceeded all expectations. I love the power, I love the speed, I love the color and the pedaling experience, which I feel is one of the most important aspects of a bike. Once again, guys, thank you for joining me. I'm gonna enjoy the rest of this beautiful day on the bike as I cruise through town following the coast. Let me know what you guys think of the bike. Maybe there's better alternatives, but 
as far as entry level, as far as your first e-bike, get into the hobby, can't beat the Juice Strip Racer, man. Thank you guys. Until next time, take care, farewell.